In this video, I'm going to show off how I use Arduino powered lighting in my studio and how I automate it with my laptop. Hey, what's up? I'm Trevor Makes, and in my last video, I shared how I used an Arduino Nano to control six color LED strips. To overcome the Arduino's limited number of analog outputs, I devised an algorithm using pulse width modulation and timer interrupts to get analog output from all 18 available pins. But I was so focused on explaining how the lights work that I never really showed off exactly what the lights can do. So I thought I'd address that by making this video all about how I actually use the lights and how I made a command line interface to change their color and animation settings all from my computer. If you missed that last video and want to see more, stick around to the end of this video and I'll put up a link there. Anyway, let's get into it. First off, here's what my studio looks like with the lights off. When the lights are first plugged in, they load my default preset, a gradient from magenta to orange, which is what I keep them set for most of the time. To build out the lighting like this, I place two strips behind the monitor, three under the shelf, and one behind the bookshelf, which makes up six zones in total, numbered 0 through 5. Each zone can be configured independently by adjusting the brightness of their red, green, and blue color channels. And they can even be animated like this rainbow fade effect. Each strip does the same cycle through red, green, and blue, but out of phase, so it looks like the colors are sweeping from left to right. I try not to use animation like this when filming though, because I don't want to deal with abrupt color transitions when making jump cuts when I edit the footage. See what I mean? If I want to get into the color and animation settings, I also have to plug this USB cable from the controller into my laptop and open up a serial monitor program. I prefer to use the serial monitor that comes with the platform IO plugin for VS Code, but it also works with the serial monitor that's built into the Arduino IDE, so you can use whatever you like. Once the serial monitor is connected, it acts like a command line interface for the lights. There's a predefined list of commands that can be typed in, and some of them also take a list of parameters separated by spaces. The return key dispatches the command, and in some cases, an error or a message is printed in response. Because I frequently use command line interfaces like this for Arduino projects, I built my own software library that makes setting these up really simple. This example includes my core library and creates a CLI wrapper around the Arduino serial interface. You can see how it works in the loop function here. The list of supported commands is written out as an array of string and callback function pairs, and this list gets passed to the run once function of the serial CLI instance. Run once blocks while waiting for a command to be typed in, with full support for text editing using the arrow and delete keys, and when the return key is pressed, the entry is searched for in the list of commands. For example, if the clear command had been entered, the do clear callback function would be dispatched. If a parameter had been typed following the command, has next would return true, and next would return that parameter as a string, which I convert to an integer using A2I. That way, the clear command can either clear a specific zone given by an integer parameter, or otherwise just clear all the lights at the same time. I love structuring the Arduino code with a command line loop like this because it makes adding new commands as simple as writing a function and adding it to a list, even if it's just a quick hack to calibrate a parameter or something while I'm testing out new code. Anyway, enough about how the commands work, now let me show you what commands I actually use to control these lights. First off, to check what the current settings are, I use the list command. This prints out all the keyframe commands that were used to make the current display. These are formatted so they can be easily copied into a text file and later pasted back to restore the same settings. Similarly, the save and load commands can store a few presets to the Arduino's built-in non-volatile storage. The first preset slot, number 0, is the one that's always loaded as the default when the controller is reset. So it's easy to reprogram this behavior. To actually change the light colors, I type the keyframe command followed by the zone number, a timestamp, which I'll explain shortly, and the red, green, and blue light intensities from 0 to 255. So, for example, I could start with a clear command to wipe the display, then type keyframe 2, 0, 255, 0, 0 to set the left side of the shelf, zone 2, to red. 
Then I can type the same zone and timestamp again, keyframe to zero, but this time change the color to 00255, which now makes it blue. The timestamp given with each keyframe is what allows for animation. When multiple keyframes are added to a single zone but with different timestamps, the color will fade between each of the keyframes over time in a loop. The duration of that loop is shared in common between all zones and is set by the period command. The timestamps and period both count in terms of PWM cycles, which are usually 245 counts per second. The simplest example is to cycle between two keyframes, fading a light in and out. First, I set the animation period to two seconds, then add a keyframe at zero seconds with the lights off, and another keyframe at one second with the lights fully white. The keyframes are blended using linear interpolation, so the transition between them appears to fade in and out. Instead of a fade, the lights can also be made to blink on and off by adding a couple extra keyframes. First, another lights off keyframe is placed right before the keyframe at one second that turns the lights back on. This way, the lights will stay fully off for one second and then abruptly turn on. Similarly, if we put another lights on keyframe right before the end of the cycle, the lights will stay fully on for one second and then abruptly turn off. Keyframes aren't just for blinking lights on and off though. A more interesting example is the rainbow fade effect that I showed off earlier. This is just three evenly spaced keyframes set to red, green, and blue. The keyframes put a constraint on what the color will be at a particular time, but everywhere in between, the linear interpolation creates a smooth transition between colors. The last command to talk about is range, which sets how many steps are in a PWM cycle. The default is 255, so the color can be anywhere between zero and 255. However, the top of the range can be set to any lower value. Doing so means fewer variation in color shades, but the PWM frequency will be proportionally higher. For example, a range of 63 would have one fourth as many shades as a range of 255, but the frequency would be four times larger from 245 up to 980 Hertz. Because the dimmed LEDs actually blink on and off at the PWM frequency, Cameras sometimes pick up banding noise that looks like this, especially at faster shutter speeds. The range command can be used to tune the frequency to the shutter speed, which can help clear up the noise. Though I tend to just use slower shutter speeds where I don't see this problem. Anyway, that's how I use my Arduino controlled light system. If you'd like to learn more about how analog output works, check out my last video over here. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, please click over here to subscribe. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.